beautiful thing of Christ dealing in the Garden of Gethsemane. And that reminds me, it's not my will, but God's that I have to be concerned about. And then on my knees be prepared to pay the price of sacrifice. And then on the other wall, these words of Walt Disney. And I want to make sure I have them correct. And I think I better read it. Somehow, quote, Walt Disney, quote, Somehow I can't believe there are many heights that can't be scaled by a man who knows the secret of making dreams come true. This special secret can be summarized in four C's. One, curiosity. Two, confidence. Three, courage. Four, constancy. And the greatest of these is confidence, end quote. Four secrets, four C's. Curiosity, number one. Behind every real creative person, there is that thing called curiosity. Curiosity is what made Einstein great. He said, you know, he was really intrigued with God. And he wrote, quote, Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. I want to know how God created this world. Curiosity. That's where many dreams are born, and surely that's how dreams come true. Curiosity. You know, that's what marks possibility thinking. Because curiosity releases breakthrough questions like, if you face a problem, whether it's a financial problem, or it's a moral problem, or it's a spiritual problem, whatever, a problem in relationships, your dreams aren't moving the way they should. Curiosity will provoke the kind of questions that can give you the breakthrough, like, who would it take to help me to get through this? If you know what questions to ask, you can solve any problem. The question may be, where do I have to move? Or, where do I have to go? Or, what do I have to read? Or, how much money do I have to raise? Or, what must I say no to? But curiosity will be where the breakthrough starts. And your dreams will come true. Curiosity. Number one. The second C. The secret of making dreams come true. The second C is confidence. Confidence. Now, self-confidence is a choice. You see, if you don't have self-confidence, it's because you probably allow negative thinking to put you down. But you can be sure that if you do what Joshua did, you're going to have confidence. If you meditate on God day and night and on this word, you'll build confidence. May I suggest three areas where you need confidence? Have confidence first in your own intelligence. Guess what? You're smarter than you think you are. But don't confuse intelligence with education. I have to make that point clear. To millions of people in America today, they've got their PhD degree, they've got their MD degree, they've got their THD degrees, they've got all kinds of degrees and credentials and certifications, and yet their dreams are not coming true. Why not? Because they have knowledge. And they lack wisdom, probably. I have a lot of friends that are super successful that aren't that well educated. And how did they make their dreams come true? Well, they have, they may lack knowledge, but boy, are they wise. Where facts is the lifeblood of knowledge, positive thinking is the lifeblood of wisdom. Become wise. You become wise when you think positively. Trust your intelligence. 
And trust your instincts. It's been said that when God wants to write something in a human being or in an organism, he puts it in their instincts. So the salmon swims upstream. Trust your instincts. And trust your intuition. Guess what? Every person listening to me has capacity for being intuitive. Now, the subconscious is the collection of all recorded memories and experiences to which you have ever been exposed, either on a cognitive or a subconscious level. And so all of these collective experiences that you have been through formulate largely the person that is called you. And through that subconscious that produces vibrations called intuition through it and in it comes the force of even Jesus Christ himself in a Christian. And the living Christ himself takes that Duke's mixture of collected memories and recollections, mixes it all up and sends up a mood. And you have a feeling about something. It's called intuition. Trust it. Believe it. Four C's to make your dreams come true. Curiosity, confidence, and the third is courage. That's the key word in the whole passage today. Be of good courage. Be brave. Have have the courage to take a chance. Dreams don't come true without running great risks. It's true for all of us. I remember meeting this guy in an airport in Dallas, Texas. He saw me and, and he says, Dr. Schuler. Then he surprised me. He held up one of my books. He said, I got your book. Would you autograph it? I said, of course. And then he looked so troubled. I said, you were troubled. He said, I am. He said, I've gone into bankruptcy. I've lost everything I ever had. I heard myself say, well, wait a minute, you haven't lost everything. He said, Dr. Schuler, you don't, you're don't know what you're talking about. I have lost everything. He said, including my marriage. But I said, you haven't lost everything. You did not lose your courage because courage is something you can never Lose because courage is something you can always choose. For fear, you know, and courage. What does it mean? Courage isn't the absence of fear. In fact, courage is probably surrounded by fears. Courage is integrity. That's what Courage is integrity to make the right decision, do the right thing, say the right thing. Therefore, integrity is something you can always choose. Courage, you may choose to be uncourageous. Be strong, of good courage. Look neither to the right or to the left. Fourth point, fourth C. Curiosity, confidence, courage, how to make your dreams come true. Point number four, constancy. Oh, yeah. Look neither to the right, neither look to the left. Keep your eye fixed right on the goal. It's that simple. Follow through, follow through, follow through. Inch by inch, anything's us. Constancy. So many people flip from one job to another, from one opportunity to another. And as soon as they run into trouble, they split, they quit. They never build a base and keep building on the base. You make your dreams come true when there's a consistency and a constancy. I was during the Vietnam conflict, nearing the end of it, and I was speaking for the Air Force, ministering to men in the Orient. And I was brought to the Tachikawa, Japan, where the, we had our main command headquarters for evacuating the, the, the wounded. And uh, the general who was in command of the whole thing said to me, Dr. Schuler, so many of the fatalities happened while they were being moved. And you take a badly wounded person, and if you move him when he's not ready to be moved, you are going to hasten 
probably an unnecessary death. So he said, here's why we have cut it down. We've only lost 11 people in transit, meaning on a litter, on a cot, in a helicopter, in an ambulance, in a train, or in an airplane. He said, now here's how we've cut it down. We're going to step into the command headquarters, and you will see three words on the board. Those three words have saved thousands of lives. And I stepped in, and I don't know, I may be totally in, inaccurate in my perception, but I have the impression that it was a room as big as this cathedral. And there was a huge map, I think 100 or 200 feet long, with all of the different lights, blinking of the different battlefields in Vietnam, and then the lights of the hospitals in the front line, and then the lights of the hospitals in Tokyo, and in Honolulu, and in Long Beach, and in Denver, and in Washington. A total network was there in this huge wall, and above it were three words. Now those letters may only have been 12 inches high, but I think they were eight feet high. They walloped me. The three words were, check. Next word. Double check. Last word. Recheck. Is it sure? Most people think they are prepared to move ahead if they simply check. We don't count on that. First we check. Will he make it? And if he does, we put him on the plane. But before the plane kind of takes off, the blood pressure can drop in a hurry. Before we take off, we double check. Is it still okay? Yes, sir. Still okay. We get off. The door is closed. We move to the end of the runway. We don't turn around and take off with a, a, a final recheck. And he said, a lot of times, just going down, positioning ourselves for the takeoff. After the check and the double check, the recheck says, wait a minute, I don't think I hear this is really right. Turn back, and we turn back. Do you know we use that in this ministry so much? Constancy, focus, follow through. How to make dreams come true? Curiosity, confidence, courage, constancy. Now, I'm ready to close, but this is going to be a great sermon. And in order to make it a great sermon, I have to tell you one last story. Very important. Abram Lincoln went to a Bible study one Wednesday night, walked over with his aide, New York Avenue Presbyterian Church. They walked out afterwards, walked back to the White House, and the aide said, what did you think? Lincoln said it was thoughtful. It was intelligent. It was very, very uh, well thought through, theologically sound. The aide said, so what you're saying is it's a great sermon. And Lincoln said, no, it was not a great sermon. And the aide said, what do you mean? And he said, Dr. Guthrie didn't challenge the people to do anything great. And he said, a sermon isn't great unless people are challenged to do something great. Are you ready for this? I gave you four C's. There are four little C's. Now I shall give you the fifth C, the big C. And the big C that gives me curiosity, the big C that gives me confidence, the big C that gives me courage, the big C that gives me constancy stands for Christ. Christ Jesus, born Son of God, died on the cross to be my Savior, rose again on Easter, alive today. Through the Holy Spirit, He comes in giving me curiosity and constancy and courage and confidence. Now I'm going to ask you to do something great. I'm going to ask you to make a decision like Clifton Davis made, to be a believer and to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior 
and your Lord. I can't give you a greater challenge than that. I dare you. Dreams will come true. today. Would you please take down my number before the 30 second commercial is over? 914-949-9495 to see if you would be able to buy an ad on TV on the late night shows after 1 a.m. on channel 2, 4, 7, 5, 9, or 11 for $500, including the videotaping. Please ask for Mr. Foss and see if we can't start you on your way to being rich and famous. Right? Probably. <laughs> All right, coming up next, Nick will have the weather for you. And you can say the word cold at least five times over. <laughs> Don't go broke, go Meineke. Hi there, how are you today? Would you please take down my number before this 30 second commercial is over? 914 949 9495. And please ask for Mr. Tell, T E L L to see if you're able to buy an ad on the TV on channel 2, 4, 7, 5, 9, or 11 for $380 if you order in the next two days. It includes your videotaping and 200,000 people will see it. See if we can start you on your way to being rich and famous. All right, that's what we're doing with Nick. Here he is now, Nick, the weather. Thank you, John. Now that's impressive. Hi, folks. A woman's work is never done, thanks to daytime TV. And in spite of what you read in the newspapers, people do not die in alphabetical order. And Paul says he can't afford to fly to Rome, Paris, or Hong Kong, but his luggage has been to all three. Bob and Joan are celebrating their 10th anniversary, eight years of eating out of cans. Regardless, you can still be happy, and the Glendora Happy Book shows you how. Send three dollars, and you'll get three Glendora Happy Books and three Glendora Money Pens. This week on News 4, I've been reporting on a tragedy. Television network that's uh, located in the Philadelphia area. It is, uh -huh. Has been in existence for over 11 years, founded in September of uh, 1976. <laughs> and uh, we bring to the Philadelphia area a mixture of uh, premium pay television programming that consists of uh, the sports teams in Philadelphia. Uh, we carry the Philadelphia Flyers hockey team, the 76ers basketball team, and the Phillies baseball team. In addition to that, we carry all the fr first run movies that you would see on your national uh, pay television services. Yeah, services. Well, that's exciting. How did you get into this business, Don? I have a financial background initially. <laughs> uh, graduates, yeah. that if you do the things that are necessary yeah. to get ahead, uh, that'll happen. Yeah. I have a financial background, too, boys and girls. I'm broke. Isn't that a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> now, we have about 420,000 subscribers wow. in the uh, Philadelphia marketplace. Probably three ingredients uh, that, that everyone has to look at. Yes. I think, first of all, people have to prepare themselves, yeah. whether that be educationally, whether they are getting themselves informed by reading, if they are students in high school or college they should try to get internships in the field that they think that they would like to work in and and all of that is is part of being prepared 
for opportunities that, that might come up. The second thing that I think that everyone has to do is to work hard. When you get into that internship or whether you get into that paid employment, there are things that you're going to have to be doing that, that are going to be requested of you that you may not want to do. Yes. You have to do every job and do it well. That's the preparation that someone does. Coupled with the hard work, they're going to be prepared for a very significant thing to happen, and that's opportunity and luck to come <laughs> along. There, I think opportunity comes along for people every day, but they haven't prepared themselves to either recognize it or accept it, and they let it go by. There are a lot of people out there who work very hard, but they haven't prepared themselves, and part of that is to be aware. Uh, they may be doing their, their job. They don't look to see what's happening in other areas of the, the company or the enterprise they're with, and so they haven't totally prepared themselves so when the opportunity comes along, they can take advantage of yeah. it. For Ron Mahalik, we'll see you later on the 10 o'clock news. Till then, have a lovely evening. Good night. Hi there, how are you today? Would you please take down my number before this 30-second commercial is over? 914-949-9495. And please ask for Mr. Tell, T-E-L-L, -L, to see if you're able to buy an ad on the TV on channel 2, 4, 7, 5, 9, or 11 for $380 if you order in the next two days. It includes your videotaping and 200,000 people will see it. See if we can start you on your way to being rich and famous. Which of these sports come out a little easier? Hi folks, a woman's work is never done, thanks to daytime TV. And in spite of what you read in the newspapers, people do not die in alphabetical order. And Paul says he can't afford to fly to Rome, Paris, or Hong Kong, but is lucky she's been to all three. Bob and Joan are celebrating their 10th anniversary, eight years of eating out of cans. Regardless, you can still be happy, and the Glendora Happy Book shows you how. Send $3 and you'll get three Glendora Happy Books and three Glendora Money Pens. Oh. It was worth the stunned look on his face. <laughs> Linda Church is up next with her complete weather forecast. And uh, Linda's going to tell us if there's any more of that white stuff in our future weather forecast in two minutes. So, ice skating. before God and in this public gathering, do you believe in God as your heavenly Father? And do you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And do you invite the Holy Spirit to bless your life now with his joy? And will you, to the best of your human imperfect ability, so live that Christ will shine through your life, if so, answer it. Yes, truly, with all my heart. I baptize you in the name of God, your heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, your Savior, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, who fills you now. God, your heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, in the name of the Holy Spirit.
person to be Robert Miller, who is playing the part of Jesus in the glory of Easter. Robert Miller, how wonderful to see you. Wish to read the scriptures. To um, I've been doing some reading about the the Roman Empire. Just to electricity, communications, literally electrified the world. Edison, Henry Ford, put the world on wheels with the automobile. Charles Lindbergh took. We could fly across the oceans. That changed everything. Alex Carrel, Nobel Prize winner, 1912, for suturing blood vessels that made surgery possible as we know it today, including transplant surgery. The last time was a year ago in Florida, and you said, write that book. Right, and it is an incredible book to read. Yes. That's an interesting thing, yes. story. I watched it. I stood with Mr. Ford and Mr. Firestone at a window of the old Ritz-Carlton Hotel and looked up Madison Avenue the night of October 21st, 31, which was the service of Mr. Edison. And every light in New York went out. The whole of the streets went out. Traffic stopped. The Statue of Liberty light went out for the first time in a long time. Uh, even the Broadway shows stopped. And President Hoover asked that this happen across the nation. And in many places they did do exactly the same thing as a memory of the man who gave us light and sound and electronics and motion in the pictures and all and a thousand other things. Now, I wasn't with Mr. Edison in the ditch, but I was digging a ditch with my men. I was head of the company. And he came along in a Ford, and just as I saw a shovel over my shoulder of dirt, I looked right at him. And from that minute on, we were firm friends. I knew he loved, after that, someone who put a spit on her hands and take a shovel. And he wrote on the picture right after that of, of himself oh. to me. Oh, oh, I love that. What, what he described in your photograph. That's right. All things come to him who hustles while he waits. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is incredible. Uh, uh, the, pictures, the pictures here are unreal. Then Henry Ford. Uh, listen. This man was the first man to sit on the running board of the first Ford V8. I don't know if you have time for the quick story of how Henry Ford called you and said, bring this reporter. Oh, yes, yes. Called yes, you, yes. Jim, get the reporter. I want to talk to this reporter. And so I, he, he came from Detroit to Florida, didn't he? Yes, Mr. Ford, uh, Ford drove the car, a Model A, from, Ford, from Detroit to Fort Myers, and another one behind him. So if he broke down, he, he wouldn't he'd be towed. But in that Ford, uh, in that Model A, was the secret, the industrial secret of the world at that time, the V8 engine. And when this interview was over and the press man left, he said, Jimmy, or said to Frank Cancel, show Jimmy what he's been sitting on. And I was sitting on the running board, the Model A, and there he, he raised the hood, and there was the V8 engine, the first it, and it wasn't known at all at that time. That man was sitting beside the best story of his career, within four feet of it. And I think it's because of that that I, I never asked to meet any of these men. Never. And they came across my path, or I across theirs. I think it was a guided thing. And then to get to know them deeply over weeks, over years, and to share these experiences and many more with them, because there were many more. That was the start of things.